those families that today shine according to their brilliant lineages had low and obscure beginnings. Juan de Mariana, La Dignidad Real y la Educación del Rey. Hello and welcome back again. Chapters 5 and 6 of Part 2 offer separate looks inside the respective households of Sancho and Don Quixote. Don Quixote's speech to his niece on the meaning of lineage, or what we would call today heredity, is one of the most humanistic passages in all of Cervantes' writings, and I would argue that it likely represents the author's own values. Just as interesting is the dialogue between Sancho and his wife Teresa, which deals with the same topic. The first thing we note about chapter five is that the fictional narrator repeatedly interrupts Sancho's discourse with critical comments made by the fictional translator. When the narrator came to write this fifth chapter, he says that he thinks it's apocryphal because here Sancho Panza speaks in a style different from what one would expect from his limited intelligence. And he says very subtle things, which he doesn't think it possible for him to know. Thus, Cervantes achieves three effects. He establishes the transformation of Sancho as a major theme. He mocks the Aristotelian idea of mimesis as simplistic, too restrictive for his creativity. And he makes readers take note of his authorial presence and think critically about his fictional characters. Sancho announces to his wife that he plans another adventure with Don Quixote because of my need and the hope which makes me happy of imagining that I might find another hundred escudos like the ones we have already spent. Not only does Sancho keep alive the issue of the missing 100 escudos, he again emphasizes the profit motive that we associate with both him and our author. When Sancho expresses his mixed feelings about his departure, he sounds like a cultured poet. I'd be delighted not to be as happy as I appear. Teresa doesn't understand. I don't know how anybody can be happy not to be happy. Sancho explains, it makes me sad to have to leave you and my children. And if it were God's will to give me food with my feet dry and in my own house without dragging me through wastelands and crossroads, he could do it at little cost and just by willing it. Did you know? In chapter 23 of part one, Sancho Panza stole a hundred gold escudos from Cardenio. Sancho's morality will be at issue throughout part two. Some consider him to be a harmless clown. Others think he is an opportunistic rogue. This is labyrinthical stuff, but if we read closely, it's not a paradox. Sancho doesn't want to have to ramble, but since he needs money, he goes. This recalls the school of Salamanca's insistence that it's natural that man should be concerned with his own well-being. But let's not overlook the comedy here. Sancho expresses his usual obsession with his ass as if he were a crusader whose lady should tend to his war horse. You take special care of the gray these next three days so that he's ready to carry weapons, double his feed, inspect the pack saddle and the other trappings because we're not going to a wedding. Sancho also reiterates that he will soon be governor of an isle. Teresa is skeptical regarding his political ambitions. She puns on the word government, meaning political power, but also judgment or common sense. And if we listen closely, she even sounds anarchistic. Oh, please no, husband of mine. Just live your life and let the devil take all the governments there are in the world. Without government, you were born from your mother's womb. Without government, you have lived until now. And without government, you will leave this world. There are many who live without government, and yet that doesn't make them give up or stop counting themselves among the peoples of the earth. Which conflicting feelings does Sancho experience when planning his next adventure? A, sadness and happiness. B, nostalgia and laziness. C, anger and pity. Correct answer, A, sadness and happiness. Ironically, she then contradicts her skepticism, sensing a chance for personal gain. But look here, Sancho, if you happen to find yourself in charge of some government, don't forget about me and your children. By the way, this is the first time that we learn Teresa's real name. She was called Juana Gutierrez in part one. 
Cervantes mocks perfectionist readers here, but he's also telling us what makes for an individual self-interest and critical awareness of others. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.